Hello everyone and welcome to my top 10 PS4 RPG video. Of all the consoles I own, I have several games for the PS4. And this is my personal top 10 RPG list for the system. You may not necessarily agree with the games. You may want to say they're in a different order. And you may have an entirely different list your own. I'd love to hear what your top 10 RPGs for PS4 are in the comment section below. So let's get started. Number 10 comes in at Dragon Quest XI. I know a lot of you may be saying, well, Callie, uh, Dragon Quest XI is amazing. What else is on this list? Well, you see, PS4 has a lot of great RPGs. So Dragon Quest XI is obviously the 11th entry in the mainline Dragon Quest series that's been going on since the NES long, long ago in the US it came over as Dragon Warrior. But this is probably one of the most modern feeling Dragon Quest games along with Dragon Quest VIII. It's a great story. It feels like you're curling up next to a book and it just feels warm and it reminds you of home. So if you like turn-based RPGs and you're a fan of you know, smooth stories, you know, clean gameplay, uh, nothing overly complicated, just a, a good time to have uh, with you and your viewers if you decide to stream it. This is a good game for you to try out. I uh, highly recommend giving this one a shot. Uh, it's also on the Switch and PC and the Definitive Edition is moving over to uh, all the systems upcoming soon. So number 10 we have Dragon Quest 11. Now on to number 9. A game that a lot of you guys might not expect to be on the list is God Eater 3. I really liked the God Eater anime. I was a huge fan of it. Uh, the first game on PSP it was also quite good. The story was great. So if you haven't had a chance to play the God Eater series, basically it's anime monster hunter. That's pretty much the easiest way I can explain it. Uh, the combat is very fast paced. It's a lot less deliberate than Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter is very slow. Uh, I'm not too into Monster Hunter, but God Eater 3 was kind of the pinnacle of the series as far as the, the graphical leap uh, coming to, to consoles and PC. So I really enjoyed God Eater 3. Uh, it was fun. I had a good story. It's definitely not what y you would expect uh, see the, the term God Eater, but the God Eater is actually their weapons. So, if you haven't had a chance to watch the anime, highly recommend it. It's a great place to start off the series. It gives a good background as to what's actually going on in the God Eater series. So, definitely give that a shot. I believe it's on Hulu or some other streaming service. So, with this game, you basically you hunt giant monsters called Aragami. As you can see on the screen here, in the footage, we have Balmung. So they have several different monsters. Uh, they have also smaller ones that aren't so powerful like this that you clear out, kind of like Monster Hunter. Uh, I believe that this is also in the same universe as Code Vein. So Code Vein is more deliberate than this combat system. This one is very, very fast paced. So if you like Monster Hunter and you like anime and you want a faster game, Give God Eater 3 a shot. God Eater 3 is my number 9 pick for PS4 RPG. Number 8. Of course, I have to place E's game on this list. We have E's 8, Lacrimosa of Dana. So, as you guys know, I really like the E's series. Uh, most fans of action RPGs will like the E's series. It has amazing music. It has a very fast, fluid combat system. And then poor Adol, of course, gets washed up on the shore. Uh, always ending up in random situations. Poor guy. So Ease 8 really takes the system forward. It's definitely the most modern of the Ease series. Falcom did a great job on it. As you can see from the footage here of one of the first boss fights, it, it's very fast paced, very smooth. Uh, as you can tell from my liking God Eater 3, uh, you would assume that I would also like Ease 8. So again, if 
if you like a story that's simple, that makes you feel like you're at home, similar to Dragon Quest, but you want some really fast combat uh, with some interesting combos, really bright, flashy skills, definitely need to give Easy Eight a try. The music's fantastic. Uh, I I listen to the soundtrack on Spotify uh, occasionally. It's just so good. So if you haven't had a chance to play an Ease game and you have a PS4, this is a game that you absolutely have to pick up. So there's obviously several other Ease games in the series, so I would recommend trying out Ease 7 if you have the option. Uh, also, the, there's a few other Ease games on this system as well, so give them a shot. So, at number 8, we have Ease 8, Lacrimosa of Dana. Now, for anyone that's been watching my channel for a while, you're gonna know this next game. Coming in at number 7, we have Ghost of Tsushima. Now, for as highly as I've praised this game, you may be surprised that I put Ghost of Tsushima this far back on the list. Well, the combat's amazing. The open world is amazing. All the little side content, the foxes, uh, the graphics, the, the ambiance to the game. It's amazing. One of the greatest open world RPGs that's ever been created, hands down. However, I mean, I'm only about a third of the way through the game. Uh, about 30 hours in. So, I haven't beaten it yet. But it's, the story is nowhere near as good as some other open world RPGs. But if you want a good time, you could just pick this game up and just go for hours. It doesn't feel like hours. The side quests really feel like side quests. You get to go and do uh, like haikus. You can write poems based on what you're seeing in nature. You can just ride through the fields. You can go, you know, fight the bandits, etc. Uh, help out villagers that are in need of assistance. You know, go chase down foxes. Do uh, the jumping puzzles with the shrines. Get extra equipment. I don't know what else to say about Ghost of Tsushima. It's it's fantastic. However, the story's a little weak in comparison to some other open world RPGs. But if you're looking for a good time, if you just want to have fun and explore and just it get immersed into a world that just feels so alive. I can't recommend uh, that you try any other game first than Ghost of Tsushima. So, coming in at number 7, we have Ghost of Tsushima on PS4. Now, at number 6, we have a game that should need no introduction. Nier Automata. This is the follow-up to the Nier Gestalt on PS3 and Xbox 360 also part of the Drakengard series. This game, uh, this game is absolutely one of the greatest action RPGs I have ever played. It is absolutely phenomenal. So you play as Android uh, 2B, and your partner is 9S. Um, basically, you're trying to destroy all the robots in the world. Uh, and you're an android trying to protect the humans. It's very important to protect the humans. So, there's so much of the story that's just incredible. And the music of this game... I mean, when this game came out, and I saw there was a soundtrack, I bought it almost immediately. And the music in this game, the ambiance, the, everything about it is just fantastic. Uh, it was very smooth. The combat's really good. The story is incredibly interesting. There's some amazing cliffhangers uh, throughout the multiple endings that you have to play through to get all the story. And the writing in this game, it's just unlike anything else that you'll ever play. So, if you haven't played Near Automata, which is available on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, you guys absolutely have to give this game a shot. The graphics may seem a little muted, but there's giant open areas as well. The combat gets very flashy later on. It's 
just this game is so good. You absolutely need to give it a shot. So again, coming in at number six, we have Near Automata for the PS4. Now coming in at number five is probably one of the my most anticipated games that I have been kickstarting ever. I kickstart a lot of games. What's Day and Ritual of the Night? It's just so good. It's it's a great follow-up to Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Uh, there were some issues with bugs here and there. There were some problems that could have been improved on. But this game... I, the music was fantastic. The, the combat was really good. There's even a chrysogram in the game. Late, late in the game. That you can get. I, I, I beat it before they nerfed it long, long ago when it first came out. And you could just steamroll through anything you wanted with that. If you guys remember the original Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is one of my top five favorite games of all. I bet I've beaten that game six times. That might be one of my next games that I start streaming. It's Castlevania Symphony of the Night is incredible, and this is a great follow-up to it. The map is huge. All the different abilities, like uh, some of the other Castlevania games, Aria of Sorrow, things like that, come into play. So you play as Miriam. A uh, shard, shard binder, shard bear, I believe. So, there's lots of different skills you get, and weapons, and magic things throughout the game. If you liked Castlevania Symphony of the Night, you like Metroidvanias, you absolutely have to play this game on PS4. It's also available for the Switch. However, I believe there's frame rate issues with that one, so just be wary. So, coming at number 5, we have Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night, one of the greatest RPGs on the PS4. Well, this next game should come as no surprise at all. Uh, it, it was amazing. We've all been waiting for this for years and years. And we finally got it. So, of course, coming at number four is Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1. Now, Final Fantasy VII Remake was... They, they did stay true to the story very good up until... Tetsuya Nomura got his claws in near the end. But, you know, I'm excited to see what they do. Because I've played Final Fantasy VII a few times. I've, you know, I've got the gold chocobo, I did all those things. But I'm excited what they do with the story next. Uh, I loved this game. Obviously, it's definitely worth playing. It's my number four on the system. If you have not played this game, and you like action RPGs, if you just like Final Fantasy, this is the pinnacle of what they try to do with Final Fantasy XV. So you absolutely need to give it a shot. Uh, so, my number four on PS4 RPGs is Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1. I hope you guys get a chance to play this. Now, my number three game is the greatest open world RPG that has ever been created, and probably will ever be created. That is Horizon Zero Dawn. The story in this game, I would have never been able to predict what happened in that story. The depth of the combat, and the story, and the world that you are in, and all the crafting, and everything else, and you just play as this outcast Aloy. And everyone knows playing as an outcast. Uh, that's the way every game is, right? Oh, you're the you're the, the savior of the village, but you're you're the outcast. Everyone hates you because you're an outsider, whatever. And this game is set in the future. So way in the future. It's like the, the way post apocalyptic times. And the machines have basically overtaken Earth or whatever planet this is part of, and you have to stop them to be able to go and find out, you know, what is Zero Dawn? What was the Project Zero Dawn? Now, no spoilers here. It's all we chose footage from near the beginning of the game. But you guys, if you like open world games, and you are interested in open world RPGs that have a great story, Amazing combat, great ambiance, and just have so many different things to do and explore and gather and collect. There is no better game that I can recommend 
for you than Horizon Zero Dawn. Of which, there is a sequel coming out on the PS5. You need to buy a PS5 for bug snacks and this. If you'd buy nothing else on the PS5, you need to buy Horizon Zero Dawn 2. It's gonna be amazing. I'm very, very excited for it. I can't wait. So, number three is Horizon Zero Dawn. Our number two, for anyone that knows anything about me, they know I love the Trails of Cold Steel series. Uh, this game started off very slow, and uh, I, I mean that with all due respect to the game. About the first 60 hours of it, yes, 60 hours, you get to play with these other characters, and you go back to the school simulation, but this time you're a teacher, and they change the combat, and everything flows different, and they... I didn't like what they did to it at first. I was pretty disappointed that the, I love Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2. I love 2. Trails of Cold Steel 2 is my favorite Trails game so far. Um, but this game, it picks up really well near the last, like, third of the game. That last fourth of the game. It picks up so much. The story is incredible. All of the wait is worth it. Cold Steel Trails of Cold Steel 4 is going to be absolutely phenomenal, without a doubt. I I'm so excited for Trails of Cold Steel 4 later this year. It's going to be amazing. We're going to stream it. But this game, you should not play it unless you played Cold Steel 1 and 2. Realistically, you need to start with Trails in the Sky. Trails in the Sky is good. It did not age super well. The combat's very dated compared to this. I'm a huge fan of Trails of Cold Steel 3's combat. That's probably its best part. Uh, it reminds me of Grandia 2, one of my favorite RPGs of all time ever. It's probably my favorite JRPG. So the combat in this game is really what sets it apart for me. And combat is a huge part of RPGs. So if you've played Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2, and you want a huge, amazing, incredible story, you absolutely have to pick this game up and play it too. It's fantastic. Just need to give it a shot. So, matter number two, Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 3. And now, for my number one game. Trickster, welcome to my velvet room. Of course, Persona 5 is the greatest RPG on this system. It is probably the greatest RPG of this entire console generation. I think this game might have been even better than Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Persona 5 was and it continues to be the greatest Persona, the greatest Shin Megami Tensei game that has ever been created, ever, in my opinion. If you have not played this game, you absolutely have to play Persona 5, especially now that Royal is out. Royal added so much extra content. You need to go play Persona 5 Royal right now. Play Persona 5. If you have a PS4, you absolutely have to be playing this. It's also on PS3, but I don't know what else to say about this game. The story is amazing. It's incredible. The combat is phenomenal. The music is fantastic. Uh, the, the art style, even the menus are art. Like, everything about this game is just absolutely... It's fantastic. It's well over 100 hours long. I think it was like 110 hours from my first playthrough. It's amazing, guys. You have to play this. So coming in at number one on my PS4 RPG list is Persona 5. You guys absolutely have to play it. Just go buy it right now. As you see there, take your time. It's a super long game. So that's it for me, guys. That's my top 10 PS4 RPG list. Thank you so much for watching. 
If you like this video, leave a like, uh, subscribe, share with your friends, visit me on Twitter, all those normal things that you people are supposed to say on YouTube videos. So thank you guys so much. Appreciate you watching, and I will see you next time.